Hello. Welcome back to the channel. Right, um, you know I haven't done a vinyl first play for a little while, and I've been trying to think of a new way of doing them, so this is the first one, so hopefully it will turn out okay. Uh, I'm just going to try it different, because obviously I keep getting all these copyright strikes, and I can't quite figure out what I'm doing wrong, so I thought I'd give uh, a vinyl first play a go. And also, you're probably wondering, Stripe me, you're churning out loads of videos all of a sudden, mate. It's because I'm off work with this. I've still got a pin in there. Um, I was hoping to get through to the doctors today so I can go back to work next week, but I can't get an appointment until next Friday. <sighs> but I'm hoping... I've got the hospital Monday, so I'm hoping they can sort of say, yeah, you can go back to work on light duties, because honestly, I'm kind of going out of my mind. I can't drive at the moment, and my wife is at work all day. Hence, <laughs> I'm doing a load of videos on YouTube, just... Because the first week I was literally Netflix, like I told you, you know, because me I was in a full cast. Anyway, right. So today I'm going to do a vinyl first play because, as you know, um, la my birthday this year. My best mate does bought me Madness's last album. A couple of years old now. Can't touch us now. But this is like the Abbey Ra Road. Um, audio file vinyl, um, the half speed master, but also, as you know, I already own Can't Touch Us Now, so stick around to the end of the video, um, so I'm going to give this away to one of my subscribers, so, and it's a great album. So, what do we know about Can't Touch Us Now? Can't Touch Us Now is the 11th studio album by Madness, released on the 28th of October, 2016. Uh, it followed their 2012 album, uh, Wee Wee See See Ja Ja Da Da, which I weren't too keen on that one. I mean, I love it. I like it a lot, and I will get it in the collection, because Madness, like the Beatles, like Pink Floyd, like Tom Waits to me, you know. Um, I want to collect them all, you know. Um... And this album uh, marked the return of Mark Bedford. Bedders, he'd had a bit of time off from Madness, and the departure from the nutty dancer, Chaz Smash. Sad, really, isn't it? You know, when you think about it. I mean, Madness formed as the North London Invaders back in 1976. Uh, and by 1979, they were making hits. So next year, 2019... Madness has been in our charts and of ours for 40 years. That's incredible. That is absolutely incredible. Man, I'm getting old. <laughs> yeah, so shall we open it, shall we? Obviously, this single album isn't a gatefold sleeve like this, so I have no idea what's in it. And I've had this since May. I know. I mean, I've got a whole bunch of vinyl, as you know, that I haven't played yet. Now, I'm going to admit to you, I opened up my Tom Waits ones and played them. I am still going to do a vinyl play on them because they're gorgeous. But, um, I just couldn't resist, to be honest. And while I weren't doing videos while YouTube was griefing me out, occasionally you just got to do it, ain't you? Nice, lovely... Lovely feel of this. Right, let's have a little butch. Oh, nice. Very plain, very simple. Beautiful. Got, you know, we, we do like some lyrics, don't we? And some crazy artwork. Oh, look at this. Can you see that? Little Bruce Lee down there. You know, I like a bit of Bruce. Right, let's have a little look at this. Half speed, 180 gram. Woo! Four tracks. Four tracks. Look at that. <laughs> Perfect, look. That's a chunk. Look at the thickness of it. Absolutely gorgeous. 
Thanks, Doz. You're a star. I am going to go and get this on the turntable. Like I said, if you're interested in getting a single copy of this, stick around to the end. Um, yeah, so I'll be back in a little while. Absolutely awesome. Um, I'm going to have to play that and the single one back to back, but it sounded big. I do like these. Um, there's a couple of Oasis albums actually done there at Half Speed at Abbey Road. I'm going to have to check some of them out, I think. Right, so let's go through it quickly. Right, it kicks off, obviously, with the title track, Can't Touch Us Now, and that's a great track. And it has a similar sound to the 1981 hit, certainly in the middle, uh, Shut Up. Do you remember Shut Up? Pass the blame and don't blame me. Has a little bit of that flavour to it. Really nice. Um, track two, Good Times. And it has a lovely sax from Lee Thompson. And about one f minute, 45 seconds into it, you've got that dirty, greasy sax sound. It's lovely. Lovely, lovely. And then track three, side one, Mr. Apples, the first single from the album. And this has got Mike Barson's big piano sound right from the very start. Which is much a, a, like a madness trademark now. Very much like, like I said, the, tr the track I mentioned earlier, Shut Up, the big keys. Track four, close your side one, with I Believe. And this starts off with... Oh, Mommy, Daddy, do I have to visit Father Francis today? Why, yes, son, you know it's feeling good. Great song. Really do enjoy that. And I like it when Madness do their little... It kind of draws you into it a little bit. You know, they, they've done that from time to time. So, <clears throat> and we flip over to... Oh, Side two, and this starts off with Grand Slam. And this is a brilliant, this is just brilliant. It starts off with gunshots and an awesome guitar riff from Chrissy Boy. I first heard Madness play um, Grand Slam uh, when me and wifey went to see him at the Grand Slam concert over Chelmsford uh, horse race track. Bloody brilliant. Because obviously I, I've been following Madness since way back then. You are getting old strikely. And I pretty much know their back catalogue and album tracks as well. So it was really nice to hear a new one. And I love this. It's another big sounding song. Uh, track two, Blackbird. And this is a lovely song, a very poignant song. Um, Black Words is about Amy Winehouse. Um, Suggs quoted, Three or four days before she died, I saw her walking down Dean Street with a guitar over her shoulder. And she said, All right, nutty boy. Uh, Suggs says, It made me laugh because I'm 55 effing years old. Uh, but that's such a, wine ice th all right, such a Winehouse thing to do. All right, nutty boy. It really got me. What a sad thing. And it is a lovely song, and it pays a nice little homage to Amy. Another brilliant, brilliant artist. Bless her soul. And part of the 27 Club. We'll go on about that on another video, maybe. Um, and then Side 2 closes with another version of me, uh, which is another great single with an excellent music video. And then, obviously, Disc 2. Starts off with Mumbo Jumbo. Uh, one of my skinhead mates, Lawrence, this is his favourite track from the album. Um, and it's a it does tip there out a little bit to their sort of two-tone ska roots, you know. Really, really good. That's followed by Herbert. And I love the sort of plinkly, plonky guitar, uh, piano on this one. She was further than her father, but I was really rather 
partial to the way, to the way she took her stand. She glanced over his shoulder, urging me to be bolder. I subtly tried to push past her old man. Track three, Don't Leave the Past Behind You. And this has got a very... This song will be stuck in your head for days. You play it a couple of times, it just won't leave your head. It's one of them songs. Um, and then tr track four, Don't Let Them Catch You Crying. Another great, great, great song. Finally, side four, disc two, side two, Pam the Hawk. Uh, and it was written about Soho's most successful tramp. Sug says, quote... She was a friend of my mum's and she used to earn about £200 a day, but it all went on the bookies and the fruit machines. It's a great song. Uh, track two, Given the Opportunity. And this was written by Lee Thompson and Chrissy Boy, inspired by Lee Thompson having his push bike nicked outside of a shop once. And he'd left it upside down and all that. And it was a bit of a, he ended up jumping on a woman's car, but the bike got away, alas. Uh, that's a good little song. Um, track three, Soul Denying. Now, I don't know why, about 15 seconds into this song, there's something about it that reminds me of um, Prince's album, Parade. It may be just a French talking. It might be just a French talking. And... Track four, Whistle in the Dark. A closing track is a marvellous piece of nonsense which sounds like a leftover, without a doubt, from Fallgate. As soon as you put that last track on, Whistle in the Dark, you'll understand what I mean. Well, have a listen to the beginning. The album was recorded live in an eight-track studio, done the old-fashioned way uh, of recording. So, love the album. Thank you very much, Doz. It sounds incredible. Um, so the obvious questions are, have they still got it, Madness? Whatever it is. I'd say, yeah. I would say, absolutely, yeah. Um, does this album stand up to previous Madness albums? Yeah, I think it does. I really do. I think it does. So well done, lads. I know this is like 2016, so it was quite a while ago. Okay, so the giveaway. If you would like a copy of this lovely, played once by me, Give this video a like. Obviously, you've got to be a subscriber. And what I would like you to do is, as well as your normal comments, I mean, have any of you heard this album? What do you think? Let me know your thoughts down there. And if you haven't played it, just drop in your favourite Free Madness songs. And I'll get wifey in a week to pick one at random. All right then, guys. So, thanks for watching. I'll be back with another ramble real soon. Take care, people.